I have not been shy about my gripes of the 2023 Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. The reason being, the 2021 and 2022 got my stamp of the best 14-inch thin gaming laptop that can be used for creators of the year. I mean, this thing was packed with so much performance, such a great price point, and so it had so much to offer for the end user. Now, this year, I have had a fan issue, which has actually been addressed by Asus. They've reached out to me, and they said that they want to get the unit that I have, review it for quality control, and try and see if they can redeem this for future use cases. So a lot of the hate that Asus has been getting for their lack of attention to their consumers I have not had that experience. The people that I work with have been very attentive to help me redeem the problems and they even want the unit to see if it can be fixed and apply those changes to future models. So I'm not personally seeing the bad support that a lot of other people are saying. I'm having a good experience with ASUS. Now, keep in mind that the 2023 model is now delivered with a single RAM stick. I think this is a really, really good move on ASUS part. However, if you order the base model like I have for around the $1,599 price point, it comes with soldered 16 gigs of RAM and an unoccupied RAM slot at which you can slide either a 16 or a 32 gig RAM stick into that position, which then increases your performance. But as I got this laptop out of the factory, I was not impressed with the performance because I was seeing better performance out of the 2022 model with the Ryzen 9 6900HS and the RX 6700S than I was with this latest Ryzen 9 7940HS and RTX 4060 GPU. They both had eight gigs of VRAM. They both had an eight core 16 thread processor, but the last year's model, the 2022, was showing better performance out of the gate and at only an extra $50 retail price point. You can actually get them on sale for around $11.99 or even $9.99 from bestbuy.com. Now, that sale might not be running currently, but it could be running in the future, so just keep that in mind. Now, nothing has really changed on the Zephyrus G14 from 2023. Outside of a little bit of badge coloring, it's more of a silver iridescent badge, as well as the keyboard deck. The keyboard deck is no longer has that iridescence along the keys, but the iridescence is still on the deck. So that's really the big changes as far as the model is concerned outside of the specs, which is why I've been saying a lot of people should purchase the 2022 model if they are 1080p, 4K video editing, working in SolidWorks, doing some light to medium 3D modeling. That is an incredible bang for buck laptop. When it comes to the 2023 models, I think we're gonna see more value out of the higher end tier models. Something at least starting at the RTX 4070. Now, Asus has reached out to me and they were saying that they're going to be sending me an RTX 4090 version. And I'm really excited to get my hands on that model because I feel like this base model is a good starting point, but I don't feel like it trumps years past. And so with that in mind, I would not personally throw all my money in on the base model from a creator standpoint. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarks so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, like I said, I went ahead and ran these tests at both 16 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of RAM. And by far, 32 gigs of RAM was, of course, the better performance. But let's just walk through this here and kind of show you what I experienced from the specific creator benchmarks. If you're curious about the exact live pricing and availability of the G14 models, head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, going ahead and looking at the export times, I'm going to go ahead and throw up all the export times with 16 gigs to 32 gigs of RAM all the way down. So you can see the differences by simply throwing an extra stick of RAM inside of this laptop. So stock 16 gigs of RAM, because it was single channel, not dual channel, we were seeing a minute and 42 on a 1080p export time. Go ahead and drop that extra stick of RAM in there and it almost cuts the export time in half. This level of improvement Improvement is not seen at that extremeness throughout the rest of the export times, but we do see dramatic increases in performance by increasing the RAM. As you can see, for the 6K B-RAW export time, it was 24 minutes and 11 seconds, which is not a good export time for this laptop, being that the 2022 model did it around the 13 minute mark. Throw in the extra stick of RAM and we're now at 14 minutes and 52 seconds. So a huge improvement by going ahead and adding that stick of RAM, but it's not better than the 2022 model, which is where I start to scratch my head, not only because it's itchy, but because it's confusing, that I think 
this model missed the mark for 2023. The specific configuration, not the G14 in general. I still think the G14 is a fantastic laptop. I just personally would not throw my money at the base model. Well, it's not even technically the base model. They have one with a 4050 and a Ryzen 7735 HS. And I definitely wouldn't put my money there personally. So for me, if I was gonna get into a G14, I would either cross my fingers for last year's model, see if I can get a good deal, or I would start at the 4070 because I feel like that will be slightly above last year's model. Now the pricing has not been known on all of these different configurations as they're just starting to hit stores, but the pricing is known on the RTX 4060 to be at that $1,599 price point, which to me will put the RTX 4070 at probably the $1,799 price point, maybe $1,899 because the RTX 4080 is currently at the $2,499 price point. So I think we're gonna see a pretty quick increase in price uh, between the 4060 and the 4070. But like I said, for me, the 4070 is going to be where I would start my purchasing decision just because if you want to make it worth the new model, that's to me where it becomes a better computer than 2022. Okay, next up on the list is going to be the Photoshop benchmark. Now, in regards to Photoshop, Photoshop definitely loves RAM. And so we see here with the base model at 16 gigs of RAM single channel, you have a 915, which is actually a lower score than last year. I did a whole head-to-head -head video on this. Um, so I'm not, I'm trying not to compare from last year to this year too much. Let's try and focus on this year's model, but I'll link that up at the end of this video. Um, and then you add that extra stick of RAM and you go up by, uh, almost 300 points. So you have 1,194 for Photoshop. So definitely a big difference. Um, After Effects is a pretty big pickup. You see almost 200 points of increase in performance at a 941. So that's really good as well. Now going to playback, this is interesting because we saw good playback out of the 16 gigs of RAM. We saw 624 drop frames out of the 16,000. 177 in the project. Go ahead and drop the RAM stick in there, 44, much better. Red footage, 111 compared to 712. Now this is where I got really excited. I'm starting to do 8K B-RAW tests for my videos. And for 8K B-RAW, we only saw 6,000 drop frames. The reason I'm excited about that is because just two years ago, you would see well over 6,000 drop frames. For 6K, this is now 8K. And so with the 8K playback, with 32 gigs of RAM, only 6,000 drop frames. I would not consider this an 8K video editing laptop yet, but the reason I'm running these tests is we're seeing that laptops are getting much, much closer, which is really cool. Now let's go ahead and run through some of the other standard benchmarks since this is technically the full review of the laptop. Now going ahead and checking out the color gamut range and brightness, you can see that we have a 482 nits of brightness with a 100% sRGB, 91% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.27. Now, in regards to the battery life, this is an area that we did not see an improvement. We still get great battery life, it just didn't get any better, which a lot of people were hoping that these new Ryzen CPUs would give us better battery life. But right now, you can see the battery life results coming up on the screen, they're pretty much the same to last year's model. And I'll list last year's model on the screen as well right now as we're talking through it. Now these battery life tests were run at 20% screen brightness with a 60 hertz refresh rate on the panel, battery saver mode in Windows, and then I put the laptop into eco mode and silent mode. So you're not getting access to the GPU to get these battery life results, but it makes for a great on the go productivity or streaming video playback laptop. Now from a build standpoint, you can watch my unboxing to kind of get my full thoughts on the build quality and usability, but here's the weight and thickness. It is one of my favorite laptops because it is so light, on the go friendly and packs a great performance. Well, it packs close to as good a performance as last year's model. Like I keep saying, the 4070 might be where I would start personally. Again, I am considered a big Asus fanboy. And so I'm trying to prove that I am not necessarily a fanboy just for the sake of Asus. I'm a fanboy when Asus delivers very well on the product. And that currently, until I can get a more performing model in my studio, was last year's model. So just trying to clear the air here. Not a fanboy, I'm a fanboy of great products. Doesn't matter who makes the product, but I think Asus does make good products. See what I'm saying? It's like, it's kind of all wrapped in one. 
Okay, let's go ahead and check out the ports real quick. On the left side panel, we have HDMI, USB Type-C, and a headphone jack, as well as your power adapter. On the right side panel, we have two USB Type-A's, another USB Type-C, and a micro SD card reader. For those of you who missed the unboxing, here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks and sounds like. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14, and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And here's a quick sample of the speakers so you can hear what those sound like. The keyboard, like I said, is the same as last year. Nice, quiet keyboard. It's not loud and clicky and snappy. It'll be great in an office or classroom taking notes or just working a long work day. Also, the trackpad is very subdued and quiet as well, which is very nice. Here's a quick audio sample so you can hear for yourself what those sound like. Now, for the simulated benchmarks, you can see that both Geekbench and Cinebench R23 are improved over last year. I think for R23 multi-core, we saw around the 14,000 range last year, and so definitely increased by about 2,000 points for multitasking multi-core performance. And so that's a good thing. So if you're somebody who does a lot of multitasking, you would have an advantage going for the 2023 model with that Ryzen 9 7940 HS, but it doesn't exactly translate into real-world results fully as we saw earlier because of the bottleneck of the RAM. And for some reason, I know NVIDIA GPUs are new, but that RX 6700S showed off more in the base model last year. Next, we're looking at Blender Classroom. Good performance in Blender Classroom. That 941 is actually a great score. I'm seeing RTX 4070s only score about the 1026. So about a 60 point difference. So as far as Blender is concerned, this still will be a good laptop for Blender. Now taking a look at 3D modeling, we saw an increase in performance over last year's model for Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, but not SolidWorks. And this is an obvious one because SolidWorks does not work well with GeForce RTX GPUs. It works very well with NVIDIA's workstation GPUs like the A3000, A4000, A5000, et cetera and with Radeon GPUs, which is why I was such a big fanboy of last year's model. It provided a lot of advantage by choosing a budget-friendly laptop with great performance in SOLIDWORKS because most SOLIDWORKS laptops that do perform well are very expensive. And so this got a lot of praise for me for 3D modeling and just creators in general. Would I purchase this laptop if I was unaware of the performance of last year's model? If Asus wouldn't have done themselves a disservice by making such an incredible laptop last year? Absolutely, because this laptop still performs very well, especially with the RAM upgrade. However, what I know from last year's model and the performance that we got, I would personally not jump into a purchase below the RTX 4070, because if I'm buying a 2023, I want to get 2023 performance. And so that is my argument for this laptop. It it is not a bad laptop by any stretch of the imagination, but if I'm buying the latest and greatest, I want to get the latest and greatest performance. So that is where I stand on the Asus Zephyrus G14. Comment below and let me know your thoughts on how you're feeling about this laptop. Don't forget links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and click or tap the screen here if you want to see my full comparison between 2022 and 2023. I'll see you in the next video.